Hey everyone, meteorologist here in Tuttle. So we've had some storms, of course, bubbling up throughout the afternoon. Some of those are starting to approach the tornadic type level. So a tornado warning has been issued from the National Weather Service in preparation for a storm that is trying to get its act together. So they want to be on top of it and ahead of it, which is obviously the best thing to do. So it has a nice wall cloud with it. It's got some rotation with it. So at this point, it's getting into that favorable area for the Lake Murray region of um, where potential tornadoes can happen. Um, and there's actually a couple of different storms. That's one of them. The other one's up around the Winniewood Paul's Valley region as well. So we're gonna get to the radar here and show you what is taking place. So the first thing we're gonna do is show you what's happening here over Paul's Valley, this particular supercell storm there. Uh, and this particular one isn't, um, you know, kind at all. It, uh, it's definitely going to have some problems with it, some large hail course, and we're also going to have, you know, the, the, a lot of lightning with it, some flash flooding, uh, in some of the low-lying areas. But what we're concerned with is just kind of the area of circulation that would uh, produce a potential tornado. And right now it's very diffuse, but it's down the southern end between Paul's Valley and Winniewood, coming up on Highway 77, just about to cross over 33, or excuse me, 35. Uh, one of the Farnham Market Roads uh, is East 1610. This is going to be about two miles north of Highway 29. So that's the intersection. That's going to be this uh, region of circulation right here. So that's what we're going to focus on with this particular storm. A new one that came out a moment ago is down south of there around Springer. Now this particular possible circulation here is showing up about oh, two miles northeast of Springer. It's going to be east of 77. Uh, County Road, and these are going to move pretty quick, by the way. Um, County Road, boy, there's not even one out there. It's, it's kind of going over to that whole um, uh, non-populated region. Uh, let's see, matter of fact, if we go underneath it, um, you can see it's a lot of farmland in this area, kind of a river valley. So that's good. Uh, but again, that's east of Springer, uh, about two miles moving away from you guys. So between Daughtery and, and uh, Gene Autry. So I'll be eventually heading up toward Mill Creek. Okay, so that's what I want to tell you so far about those two potentially tragic storms and a new one just issued um, over here, Overbrook. So um, there is a tornado there in Springer. So we'll go back to that one. This is a new uh, tornado warning for you guys around Medill. Go ahead and seek shelter for that one. East of Overbrook, Overbrook, you're fine. So here's the Springer one, as we talked about. Um, luckily, the tragic action is currently over an area of land uh, that uh, doesn't have any major population with it. So the large tornado is on the way. This is going to be southwest of Dodery's though. So if you live in Dodery, be in your shelters as the storm passes, probably just on the south side of town, uh, probably by about a mile as far as where the tornado will occur. Uh, kind of splits where the Rock Creek stream uh, splits in half. That's about the location where that tornado is going to cross over here in just a few seconds. So I'm going to let you know about that. So the wording on this from the National Weather Service, uh, let's see here. Trail warning in effect for northwestern Johnson County, east central Carter, and southwestern or southeastern Murray. Uh, Trail confirmed, spotted uh, near Springer, which is east of Springer, moving east at 30 miles per hour. So take shelter now. Uh, weather, spots is, weather spotters have confirmed it. We got live, looks like uh, chaser crews out that have got it. Uh, of course, Springer, it's east of you. Mill Creek and, and Dodery is going to be in the path of this. So you need to be in the center part of your home, um, well away from windows. You'll also have hail with this, about uh, golf ball size, um, and again, some significant damage uh, that would likely occur with that particular tornado. Uh, let's take a look. The issue with this storm and some of these in this area is that they're very far away from the radar. So they're not going to get a good low-level scan. Uh, we're looking at about 60 miles away, and that puts the radar beam, let's see, where are we? About 5,000 feet. So we won't be able to track you know, the lowest levels of where the um, traffic circulation is. So the radar data is going to suffer a little bit as far as getting a clean look in the velocity data. That does happen on occasion, um, but that's what we're going to be looking for. Uh, here in Paul's Valley, same kind of idea. We were watching that particular storm. Eh, it's kind of falling apart on the circulation side. 
Uh, it's going to be right around Winniewood, so north of you guys by about two miles, running right along uh, North Road 3270. That's north out of Winniewood. Uh, no intersection. Uh, there might be a little tiny. Now this not even named. Closest named road for east west is 1620. Also, again, moving east out in Winniewood, or again, more open farmland. So those are the two trade warnings, actually three, lined up here, north to south. So this is in the area we talked about last night and at lunchtime for my Facebook Live uh, and on YouTube and Twitter, how the ideal corridor would be probably around Paul's Valley and Paoli, and then stretching on down to north of uh, Ardmore. Uh, so, so far, these these favored cells have developed in that region. The one here is actually south of Ardmore, actually is still in that favored region. Uh, models didn't favor this location, but that's got some good spin with it. So we can also assume that one will likely be producing a tornado. The probability of hail, 91% with this particular storm. Uh, let's see, we lost that one. Probability of a tornado is at 17%, but I keep in mind these algorithms suffer a little bit because they can't get uh, the good low level uh, volume scans from the radar data, but they do the best they can to kind of interpolate. So be in your shelters if you live around the dill. Uh, let's go to, we'll just put a storm track on that here in a second. Uh, also for you guys uh, in Springer, again, I know that uh, warning included you, but it's well east of you now. Uh, those of you folks that are in Daughtery, though, needs to be in your shelters at this point in time. And with these storms moving about 30 miles an hour, they're going to be pretty quick movers, so they're not going to hang around too long. Here in Oklahoma City, we did have some thunderstorms in our neck of the woods that kind of rolled through. Some brief heavy rain and lightning. Might have gotten a little bit of tiny hail with that, but that system is out of here. It has no threat for tornadic activity. We're going to stay focused down here in southern Oklahoma. Just so you know, there's other storms in northern Oklahoma. We're not concerned with those. What we're concerned with is the ones that are down here across this part of the state. So again, that's uh, the Paul's Valley area, also around uh, Sulphur and Mill Creek and then around Medill and Overbrook, and finally one last storm does not have a uh, tornado warning on it at this time around Thackerville, east of you guys, moving along the Red River Valley. So that will kind of stay in that vicinity. Nothing else down across northern Texas at this time. Okay, so let's do a little track for you. So these, this area is under a train to watch. So this first storm is for Roth and Fitzhugh, uh, 5 o'clock and 5.05. That's 30 minute warning to get into your shelters. That's plenty of time, just don't dilly dell. Uh, if we head on into the uh, Springer storm, that one that's moving to the east, put a track on that one. Uh, Medill or Mill Creek was the main uh, location, the path of that one. And then we have Medill. Uh, for this third storm down here along with Oakland again for about another half hour or so so plenty of time to be in your shelters for this particular uh, traumatic thunderstorms three of them and as always it's the same uh, information which is lowest part of the floor or lowest floor so lowest part of the building I should say which is the lowest floor or even underneath the floor if you got a basement or a storm shelter is obviously a better idea but the center part of the building away from walls and windows if you're in a mobile home you have to get out of the mobile home you have to go find another shelter uh, there's no ifs ands or buts you know the drill if you live in Oklahoma those things won't even survive an EF1 which is a small tornado uh, an EF0 you'll probably be okay but these probably aren't going to be EF0 tornadoes uh, so you need to put in being a star stronger, sturdier shelter for that. So those are the latest looks at those three particular storms on the big picture. Uh, let me look. We are in, let's plot this. So earlier I mentioned uh, they were coming into an axis that had some pretty good instability. Uh, the uh, the uh, significant tornado parameter is up around a three to four four or five in this area. Uh, so they're kind of in that sweet corridor of instability. And they're gonna kind of ride that through. So the odds are the potential for producing more tornadoes will continue as they kind of um, tapping into that part of the atmosphere. And 
and the the conditions should move east along with the storms. So at this point in time, if you remember the soundings we plotted earlier, the southeastern part of Oklahoma as these kind of mature and move east could become significant. Okay, so back here onto this view here, and I'm going to split the panel. So we'll do some analysis on, on all of these. Um, so the circulation center is very diffuse, not well organized uh, for the one that's around Winniewood. Uh, it's actually kind of falling apart a bit, but the track is North Road 3300 south of East 1600. That's moving to the east. Uh, that's what, what the residual that particular traumatic thunderstorm rotation is. Uh, there's nothing looks like spotted from any official storm chaser in that area. Uh, just radar indicated uh, circulation. Uh, the one south of there that was around a Springer, which had a pretty decent sized tornado with it for a few minutes, uh, that circulation has really fallen apart and that's kind of moved to the east. Uh, but still, you need to be in your shelters toward Mill Creek. So that's where it's going to be heading toward next. Uh, from there, we go down south to Medill. You guys still need to stay in your shelters. Still some broad circulation with this one. None of these at this current moment have anything drastically concerning when it comes to um, the dual Doppler, or excuse me, the uh, dual pole radar analysis. So in other words, they're all kind of in a, a recycling phase, uh, which is good. Uh, that typically means that, you know, even though you're seeking shelter, there's not currently a tornado with those at this moment. Now give it another couple of minutes and that may change, uh, but that's kind of the way these things go. Uh, let's see here. And at times you'll hear me um, kind of get quiet because I'm thinking. <laughs> it's very hard to think, analyze, and talk all at the same time. Um, So the good news is, as far as Doppler radar goes, um, those track circulations were brief. So that's good. Okay. Now here in Oklahoma City, like I mentioned, we got a few showers that rolled through, some thunderstorms, reef heavy rainfall that's out. Now that we're behind the cold front, so actually nothing's gonna happen here anymore as far as anything severe oriented. It's all gonna be shifting in the southeast Oklahoma at this point from, if you draw a line east on 40 and south on 35, it's in that quadrant. So it's in southeast Oklahoma from here on out. So nothing in southwest Oklahoma and we take a look here. This is the latest surface uh, map, which shows the triple point is now situated uh, along east of, uh, probably east of Paul's Valley uh, is where that's located. So that takes the threat of any severe weather along with it. The severe weather will lie right along this surface low and points to the east and points to the south. Uh, so in other words, we're in a very small corridor here of uh, the state that's got the best shot at seeing traumatic type thunderstorms. So that's in this area here that I've got boxed in with yellow. That means there's no problems up here or out here or even up here. Okay, just so you guys know that. Now you still might get a little bit of hail uh, in some of these stronger storms in this region, uh, but as far as the tornado threat goes, we're looking um, around southeast Oklahoma. Satellite viewpoint shows pretty good look at the animation of how these storms developed what we call the clear slot. And that's in this region here with instability overlaid onto it. And now they're moving off uh, east from there. If I were to take a look at the environment uh, for the parameters that these storms are going into, and we can see how that matches climatology as to whether or not we can expect 
tornadoes to develop in this region. If you look in the environment for all tornadoes, uh, we meet the criteria for the significant tornado parameter and the supercell parameter, uh, the cape parameter, uh, effective shear, and helicity, and even the what we call the it's lifting condensation level, basically the cloud base, very, very low. So being an outlier over here on the low end here, which means the clouds are lower to the ground, is fine, which means all of these parameters are met. Now, if we look at significant tornadoes, in other words, EF2 or greater, so not an EF0 or EF1, uh, the effective shear is a little light currently. That's good. That's over here on this end of the scale. Uh, so on the outlier bars. The error bars. If you look at the supercell, it's also kind of on the low end. Uh, the capes on the low end. Shear is good. Uh, helicity is low end, and that doesn't matter really. So a few of these categories aren't being met for a significant tornado. Uh, when we go back and compare the database, so that kind of looks like this. You take this as the climatology map of all the tornadoes in this area, given all those different parameters and all these different tracks that you can see and they go into a big database we can pull from them to see how they compare to the environment of today. And I've used this tool off and on for the last couple of years and it's interesting um, you know some, sometimes it does pretty well and other times Mother Nature is going to do what Mother Nature wants to do but that gives us at least some general guidance that we can use. Storm Prediction Center just so you know uh, has still that same area southeastern quadrant of the state under the moderate risk of severe storms along with the hail, or excuse me, the tornado threat in that same region, stretching down into basically the uh, eastern Texas down to Bryan College Station. All right, of course, wind and hail to boot in that same area. Uh, the sound they launched at uh, Norman today uh, was over Oklahoma City itself, which showed quite a bit of subsidence and dry, uh, dry air in the layer in the column. So it really wasn't representative of what was happening in uh, in our region, down south into Fort Worth. This is their sounding here, is what I'm showing you. Uh, and they have a significant cap to overcome. So this cap is this layer right here, which means it may be very hard to get any storms in Dallas. They may have to form north and east of there, which is what the models were indicating and struggling with earlier today. So Dallas may end up dodging a bullet just because you're pretty capped in that environment. And a cap can usually suppress thunderstorm development. That's a good thing when it comes to this type of atmosphere. Okay, um, these are the operational rotation tracks. So if you look at the low-level rotation tracks, um, here's been that little hopscotch one uh, that we tracked earlier. Uh, and I'll get another view of that here in a minute. Let me see what else I've got up here. Those two, okay. Um, I do have a couple of storm chasers out so if once their streams get going, we'll pull those up. Uh, one was down in uh, southwestern Oklahoma, then one was up uh, to um, southern Oklahoma. So once they get up, we'll start pulling up their streams. But their streams, will, if, they're, if they're out chasing for the day, they'll be live on my website, AaronTuttleWeather.com. All right, let me get back to the radar. Let's do this panel here, and let's turn this off. So what you have in this area is a tornado watch indicating these yellow boxes, county outlines. So it does include Dallas, just barely, and then points northward from there. Uh, so this is the tornado watch for the afternoon. Uh, you can see all the storms are lined up here along I-35, just east of there, 77, uh, and moving east at about 30 to 40 miles per hour. Looks like the biggest hail I'm detecting is about an inch and a half in diameter, so the hail is not the same size it once was, which is good. Now all these um, these three storms still have the tag in it, which is tornado possible. Uh, this one actually has the tornado observed as the old tag. Uh, the tag meaning just a, a, a note indication, the warning that the Weather Service kind of supplements, adds in there. 
Uh, there's a wall cloud report on that southern storm along the Red River. Uh, looks like rotating wall cloud five miles east of the current location, broad rotation moving east northeast. So that can be a situation where that one may eventually here get a tornado warning because of that. All right, let's do some storm tracks on this. Remember, I, the last ones I gave you covered about 30 minutes in time, so there won't be much difference uh, from what I've showed you before. So it gives me plenty of time to go back and do analysis. Let's go to this one here. Oh yeah, these are really kind of kind of lined out and kind of got um, a lot more disorganized. So let's see. Now this one, yeah, the northern storm is really disorganized. The Winnie Wood one, I can't even find an area of rotation anymore. The south one, though, that's coming into Mill Creek, so got some good broad rotation with it. Uh, right along, so that's the county line. Coming up on the county line, closest road intersection that shows up, uh, Dobb Ranch Road. Uh, it leads into Mill Creek on the south side of town. So that'll be about the intersection it comes on into. Um, so that particular tornado, or at least uh, rotation thereof, would be in that area. So let's take a look at this. So the circulation is definitely lower, below 10,000 feet. Um, I don't see any debris lofted up in the air, which indicated to say that uh, there would not be a tornado at that time. So what happens is these dual pole signatures that can detect um, things thrown around by the tornado. That's non, um, you know, weather related. So it could be trees, dirt you know, buildings, whatever it may be, uh, and it'll loft it up in the air at, uh, so if it were to happen, it would loft it up in the air several thousand feet uh, to about something like this, and it would be a dark blue color. In that dark blue color, then I can come back in and we can look at uh, this graphic here. And I can measure the winds in that one as well. So we can take a look at how high the uh, there's also a, a parameter that, that we can look at on a number scale that we'll look at the uh, the number values and we'll correlate that with the height of the debris signature. Uh, but then we'll get the height and the rotation, uh, the velocity uh, rotation with that storm and we can put it in a category of an EF scale. In other words, this is kind of like um, uh, predicting the uh, damage or the strength of a tornado on the fly. So this is what the newest research has been coming out with the last couple of years. So we'll be able to use this to kind of gauge how big the tornado is uh, once that happens. The, typically though, you need a good strong couplet for this to work well. And we did not have that in that data to the south when those first, uh, first tornado touched down. The others, there were warnings, but I'm not sure there was any confirmed touchdowns. Um, but we would need a little bit better velocity data to, uh, to be able to use this chart. But definitely something I'm gonna look at once we get into that position again. So in the southern one here, probability of a tornado is about 62 percent. Shear is about 231. Strong, the level moderate. Max moderate. Okay. Probably a trend on this one is lower at 20%. It's interesting, these sometimes these guidance tools make sense and sometimes they don't. It just depends. Uh, you still need the human interpretation of some of this stuff to kind of figure out what's going on. So there you go, there's your three tornadoes at this point in time. As far as tornado warnings go anyway. Um, if you're just now kind of tuning in, 
uh, or somebody shared the video and you're like, okay, where are we at? You know, what's going on? Who needs to be uh, worried about this? It's, we're talking about southeastern Oklahoma now at this point. So South Central and Southeast Oklahoma. So not Oklahoma City, not Tulsa, not anywhere around either one of those towns, all right? So this is the region we highlighted in the model data earlier today and last night for tornadoes. Last night's events were big hailstorms. Um, tonight's event, there's some hail, uh, not nearly as big, uh, but more of a tornadic threat. So at this point, I'm kind of just waiting in, uh, for one of these to, to do something again. The Mill Creek one is really ramped up. So it has a conditional probability of an EF1. V rotation 40 knots. This storm is about 45,000 feet. That's about 15,000 feet taller than the ones last night. Um, these have a lot more instability to work with. They're uh, surface-based. They're rooted in the boundary layer. Got a little bit better shear. A lot of things going for them uh, this time around. So in Mill Creek, as we talked about, it'll pass just to the south of you, coming up on Highway 7 here momentarily. Uh, that'll probably place it right over Rocky Road, is the intersection. So between there and Old Highway 7, uh, that's where the circulation center is going to pass by here in just a few moments. Uh, let's see. What happens when you get the just so you know on this map, when you see the red boxes, it indicates a tornado warning. When you see the purple box, it means a tornado has been sighted. Uh, in other words, it's no, no longer Doppler radar indicated. Uh, it's been sighted, you know, and it's doing some type of damage or, you know, the idea is it does damage anyway, whether the damage is over trees, farmland, or whatever, uh, it's at that size to do so. So they issue a, a purple in this case, uh, for this example. Now, if it goes to double purple with the black line on it, that means it's a large and damaging tornado destroying stuff. All right? That's like the most extreme wording they can get out uh, to take the storm seriously. The probability of tornado on this storm is still only around 20 23%. Ironically, the one it listed north of there is at 53, and that's not accurate. So some of this stuff I'm going to stop using if it's just going to be nonsense. It's not guidance if it guides you in the wrong direction. All right. Now, on the bottom of this uh, broadcast, is, it's going to give you a couple things to look at. One is um, how to protect yourself from hazardous weather, some tips in that way. And also has uh, information on the weather app, so you can grab that. It'll warn you of a tornado before warning actually comes out. In other words, it gives you a, um, an extra 10 to 20 minutes lead time that there's a damaging storm or dangerous storm. Uh, it'll give you a twisting storm alert. And that number that'll give with it is a, uh, a rating scale of 1 to 10. So. If it says one, it's not really much to write home about. Um, I just pay attention to it as it's a strong storm. If it's a four, five, or six, I'd pay really close attention. Go ahead and get my precautions ready in case I need to hit the deck. And if it's a seven, eight, nine, or ten, just go ahead and hit the deck because that's a that's a confidence probability forecast of a tornado. So that's how that app works. It's called AT's Weather to Go, and it works all across the country. Uh, so you can take it with you where you go. So Ada, you'll get the uh, part of this northern storm 
Uh, the one over Roth has had a, uh, I believe was still a funnel. Um, there was a funnel and then it may have been a brief touchdown on a field just a moment ago. And brief could mean literally five seconds or one second. Uh, there's no strong um, couplet on radar as far as the velocity data goes. Down south of that one, Mill Creek's got a much stronger couplet. It's just we're looking at uh, 5,500 feet in the air. And then the one at Medill is even farther than that, so we're looking at around 7,800 feet in the air. But it's got a nice couplet too. Um, so Medill, still stay in your shelters for that one. So that's three still potentially tornadic thunderstorms. So the tornado watch will go until nine o'clock, by the way. Um, and let me see what I got here. So I'm kind of in a sit and wait deal here. Uh, so Medill does have a confirmed tornado on the ground. So it just came out. So there's a tornado on the ground located uh, at 199 and 377. And they are sounding the sirens in Ada uh, for the northern storm. Okay. Um, we'll go back to this Medill deal here. So again, in the deal, you should already be in your shelters and since half an hour ago, so hopefully you're still staying there. Um, last reported observation from this one was a tornado at 199 and 377. So 377 runs right into town on the south side. Uh, runs right up into 70 and then 199. Well, that's South Road 99. That was back southwest of town by about a mile and a half. So now they've got it updated from the fire department moving in at uh, 5th Street. So it's the 377 and 5th Street. There's Gunter, Tishomingo. I'm looking for 5th. There's 1st. There's 5th, or South 4th Avenue. And there's South Fifth Avenue. All right, so roughly, because the tornado keeps moving as those reports come in, it was reported in this area, and now it's roughly moving into this region. So it's just north of the split of 70, um, where 377 splits uh, with 99, and then becomes 70. So that's basically where the center of that tornado is going to go. So be in your shelters if you live in Medill, lowest floor, away from all windows, outside walls. Uh, ride the storm out until it's moved east of you. So new updates come in with that, still to the east side. Okay, so that's the Medill storm. Stay in your shelters. The wording on that from the Weather Service. Tornado warning remains in effect until 515 for North Central Marshall County. Confirmed tornado over Medill moving east to 20. Damaging tornado golf ball size hail. Weather spotters have confirmed it. Um, locations, Medill of course, and then Oakland coming up a little bit later. And hail to the size of golf balls, possible. So eventually, it's also come past north of Cumberland. Um, 
and then kind of hugging again the southeastern Oklahoma from there. It's going to, it's got a ways to go, so it's not going to die out anytime soon. So if you live in Armstrong, Cumberland, Silo, Caddo, this storm will be kind of in your vicinity. If it moves more of a northeastern track, it'll, it'll pass by you, but move more toward uh, Kennefick and maybe even toward Coleman. It just kind of depends on how, um, how long the tornado's on the ground because that kind of forces it to go more of a eastward right-hand path. I hate when the tornado or when the TV stations show the same old tornado video over and over and over because they got nothing else to show you and I'm like, well there's still storms going on right now and you should probably stay focused on those rather than reliving the past. For example, this tornado in, in Medill is now reported doing damage. They said it is a large tornado. Now the radar reflectivity data has just now come down quite a bit. So I believe it's on a weakening trend. And we should see a debris signature with this at some point. Um, So there are some storm chasers in the area of Enmadil. But the velocity data has really diminished to almost nothing. So I'm hoping that means that things are dying out quickly. Probably the tornado was at 75%. This algorithm's a little behind the curve. It just popped up here recently. See the one in Mill Creek. Let's take a look at that one. Still got a nice little couplet. Eh, it's it's weak, but uh, it's here south uh, east of Mill Creek, about oh looks like about four miles, five miles, around along State Highway Seven and Ten Acres. Looks like what is that? Uh, Ten Acre Rock Road is the intersection of that uh, potential tornado. That's moving eastward along Highway Seven. Uh, Indian Church Road is next, and then up around the Pennington Creek Stream after that. So be in your shelters in that area. Uh, the one that was sounding the sirens in Ada, um, probability of hail is at 97%, wind at 95%, probability of a tornado at 44%. Uh, there's no strong couplet with that one. Uh, there is a generic broad rotation on the end of that. Uh, trail sirens sounding in the city of Tupelo and Central Homa and Cole County as well. Keep in mind that trail sirens are really made for people that are outdoors and have no clue as what's happening going on. They're not made to be heard indoors so use those as your last ditch uh, resort of information. You should always be weather aware in the springtime have weather apps with you, weather, know a weather radio with you, um, many ways to get information uh, rather than the last second. Uh, kind of like Californians have to deal with earthquakes, we got to deal with tornadoes. It's just one of those things you do when you live here. Always have a game plan, know where you want to go, uh, know what to do. Okay, Marshall County. So, trail still reported down here in Marshall County. Five miles southwest of Oakland. Let's see here. Oakland must be a very small town. Can't get to show up on my uh, on my map. I need to switch radar sites. So 
So all these little cone um, icons you see here on the screen are prior tornado reports from the storm spotters. So those get overlaid on the map once they come in. So for example, this storm down here along the Red River, they've got a lot of uh, wall cloud reports. So here's a wall cloud here. Um, there was an older wall cloud report here. Uh, of course, you get some hail reports in this as well. Looks like dime size and nickel size. Um, we'll go up the chain. So again, Medill also is where the other potential trade is located northeast of town by this point in time, running uh, up north and east of 199. Let's see, we're going to go north of there. The one in Mill Creek has left your region. Uh, it'll be heading toward Bromide and then back from north from there. The next one is up around Fitzhugh, up in the Ada. Now, in this particular case, on all of these, the data has an indicated a very strong couplet, more of a broad circulation but regardless that broad circulation down here is not going to be in Ada uh, more than likely would move just north of Stonewall so kind of in this area so go down south it's hard to find that one around Bromide and Mill Creek it's really dissolved the one south from there in Medill still broad in this area uh, here So it's uh, being reported as a multi-vortex on county line 377 out of Medill. So let's go back into this guy here. I think that report was correctly accurate on the location. Yeah, I don't see any debris signatures lofted. Let's go back where that thing crossed over. Let me do this. Yeah, it never really uh, indicated much on radar, which is interesting. From, from the reports, it's, it sounded much worse. Um, but once it left Medill, it kind of lost it. Um, and there's still some reports straggling in that there's still something going on, but nothing like there was before. Uh, and there was apparently doing damage in Medill, but it did not seem to show anything of that on radar being picked up and lofted. So I like seeing that, meaning that if there was damage, it was minor, and it wasn't significant enough to be detected by the radar system. Uh, pretty far away, um, and it would have to get pretty high in altitude. But on a really strong, violent tornado, that happens. So this tells me this probably wasn't a, a, a violent tornado. And a violent meaning, you know, the big kind, EF four and five. So. Maybe it was just, maybe it wasn't even a strong, maybe it was a, you know, EF1 just looked more menacing. We won't know until the damage survey is completed. All right. The one here south of Ada is finally getting uh, its act together. So it's going to produce a tornado if it isn't already doing so. 
Yeah, just about to. So it's a pass north of Fitztown. Location for this, just west of 377 and coming up on 1620. So be in your shelters if you live there. This is southeast of Ada, by the way. Um, so why did I say, hey, look, all of a sudden it's going to produce a tornado now? Well, first off, you know, you got your nice hook echo uh, structure, your nice uh, supercell structure. All right. But if you look back just a couple of scans ago, one, two, you see how there was no hook. And then what happens is we go through time. That hook then starts to take shape. And along with it, co-located, is your velocity couplet that's starting to take shape. So that's this guy right here. It's where the red and green come together. So that's the beginning stage that you need for tornado. So it's trying. Um, so we'll have to see what happens with that. But uh, the weather service will keep the tornado warning going because of that look on radar. Okay, so the weather service finally put a uh, train of warning on this last southern storm. Remember, it had some wall clouds reported with it. One report was a brief funnel, made it halfway to the ground, and that was about it. So, weather service will issue a train of warning anytime a funnel is spotted. Now, keep in mind there's a difference between a funnel and a tornado. A tornado is a funnel that's touched down and that's actually at the ground level. Sometimes you can't see that, believe it or not. Just because you get situations where your trees are in the way or you don't have enough condensation from the cloud base uh, so sometimes you can't see the bottom of a funnel and it may actually be a tornado on the ground um, so in those particular cases it's always best to just go ahead and issue the warning because uh, it's on its way you know if it doesn't make it well that's a good thing but it tried all right that one in the south of Ada near Fitztown it gave it its, its little effort there here in this scan right here. So if it would have produced a tornado at all, it would have been in this location, which is over, I believe literally, there's not even a road there, so I'm gonna guess open farmland. So yep, patch of trees. That's where that tornado would have occurred, this little green triangle um, over trees. No farmhouses, no nothing. Excellent, perfect place for it. But regardless of that, the next scan has come in and it's, it's gone. So what this means is, for you guys in Stonewall, um, it's going to pass to your northwest first off, but stay in your shelters. Sometimes you get uh, redevelopment on the south end of a storm when it reorganizes. Ada, you're just getting the hail core moving through. That's it for you. Um, Clarita, you're going to get a good nasty hail storm. Um, the circulation center is weak, but it's currently located Coming up on Blue River Stream, last known road. Oh, uh, there's not one. Tower Road. Tower Road and Blue River Stream. That's east of 377 by about a mile and a half. North of Highway 7 by about two miles. Dead Man Spring Road. So the residual circulation will be going in that direction. All right, so let's... Uh, Cumberland... There's a new circulation here on the north side of U, if that's not, yeah, that just started. So you need to be in your shelters. So being your shelters for Cumberland could be a developing uh, traumatic circulation, a new one in your area north side of town okay so let's do this is that a mezzo discussion yeah it is uh, let's go let's see let's do this Risk of tornadoes, large hail, damaging winds continue. Uh, some tornadoes, potentially strong ones, again, that's EF2. Large hail, damaging winds will increase eastward within a corridor in the Weather Watch area. Discrete cells 
Supercells have developed across the northern portions of the watch area along a cold front dry line combination in central and southern Oklahoma. A tornado has been observed near Springer, Oklahoma already, and radar data shows strong low-level mesocyclones on all of the storms. These cells will move into an environment supportive of additional tornadoes with strong low-level, uh, basically rotation, um, helicity of 200 to 400 meters per second squared. Strong tornado will also be possible with the more intense low-level mesocyclones. All right, so tornado warning coming for Bryan County for that storm that's in Texas. All right, let's get a track on this to see how if the atmosphere has changed any. Uh, make sure this is accurate on time. Yeah. Okay. The environment coming into this still looks conducive for tornadoes in general. Significant tornadoes. It's still a little low on some of the parameters, so that's good. So in other words, so far we have an environment that's favorable for weak tornadoes, or it's not favorable for strong tornadoes, at least when we look at uh, climatology. And the dry line and the cold front combination that we talked about is quickly moving fast and pushing the clouds and the storms along with it. We can look at that here as well. Yeah, surface low near Pontotoc County looks like. Stand around this vicinity, and uh, the cold front dry line kind of wraps around like so. Uh, the warm front, which is the northern fringe of where you get this kind of activity, is basically doing something like this. So we're looking at a very small corridor now, shrinking in magnitude as far as tranic potential goes here for southeast Oklahoma. So it won't be much longer. And this activity will be out of the state because it's moving really quickly. Let's see anything else I want to show you. Let's see here. Oh, that's what I was going to show you earlier. And I got sidetracked. That's right. So let's do that. Let's turn this off for a minute. Okay, so these are rotation tracks. So this is indicative of either tornadic or sometimes where the mesocyclone went over produces the largest hail, that kind of deal. So the Paul's Valley one, you can see I went between Winniewood and Roth. So kind of just in this fashion here. Uh, low level circulation for the Springer went right through Springer to the east and then kind of curved back to the east toward Mill Creek. So you see how most of these are kind of moving in a more eastward path. Then the one that's around Medill, again, start about I-35, move right through Medill in 99, 199, continues to move east. And then finally the one down here, uh, south of Thackerville, north of Gainesville, is moving kind of northeast. Um, now beginning to approach into Oklahoma. So those are what we call the uh, low level mesocyclone trackers. Um, this is the, if you plot a history of the radar, that's what that information looks like. Let's see. Just need to check on something.
Okay. Boy, a lot of stuff on the screen, isn't there? That's busy. Almost too much. Baseball size hail reported in Durant, Bryan County at Nydia 78 and 22. Okay, so the train warnings continue. Oh, that's what I was going to do. Let's do a storm track on this stuff. Let me turn this off. Go back to here. So we'll start with the southern one and work our way up north. Okay, so in this particular storm track, Kelly will be coming up in Colbert over the next 20, looks like 10 to 20 minutes. So stay in your shelter, especially if you live in Colbert, and then eventually Kelly, but it's moving kind of northeast. So as long as it does not produce a large, strong tornado, it should kind of continue moving more of a northeastward track, which would take it northeast of Achille, but um, around Colbert at least. And Calera, just go ahead and stay in your shelters. You'll probably get punnelled by the hail with the tornado kind of passing south of you. All right, so that takes care of this southern storm that just crossed in and out of Texas. Let's do this. Motion moving uh, about 30 miles per hour, has wind of 70 miles per hour in it with hail about golf ball size. All right, the one north from there that's going to take it to Caddo and Kennefec really before then over the next uh, 30, looks like 20, 25 minutes. So stay in your shelters if you live north of Armstrong around Kennefec and Caddo until this storm passes by. Uh, it's also radar indicated tornado warning and uh, I believe it had some decent tail uh, with this one. Well, it says 1.75 so again probably golf ball size. We'll go up the road from there, and then we've got the storm coming into Wapanuka and Lehigh and Colgate here eventually. This one seems to be moving a little slower, possibly. Uh, moving, let's see, Lehigh coming in around uh, 536, Phillips and Stringtown till 546 over the next 20 minutes. You guys being in shelters for this particular. Uh, radar indicated try to warned storm uh, let's see and then last but not least the one that's moved away from Ada uh, this one's of course moving over Stonewall now uh, then eventually Wardville and Ashland will have to be in their shelter. Central Homa, you're probably going to be okay, but just play it safe and stay in your shelters because this should pass to your north. Um, so I'd have to do something really crazy to move into town. But um, right now, we'll play on the safe side.
And then we have finally one little thunderstorm out here around Seminole. You guys are not in the area of, you know, severe weather type situation, so you'll be okay. You're going to have maybe some small hail out of that at most. Maybe a couple lightning strikes with that, because I do see some pluses here on the ground that are kind of coming through the radar data around Tecumseh, east of you guys. So a little bit of lightning, tiny hail, but no threat of any traumatic activity. Same thing for up here around Stroud and Chandler, just a heavy thunderstorm. Uh, so all the action right now, as far as any tornado potential, is now moving into southeast Oklahoma. Okay, so for those of you folks, okay, hold on a second here. Get this working. There we go. Um, in southeast Oklahoma watching, uh, you will notice that the Oklahoma City TV stations will no longer cover that area. Uh, every station covers a certain market. In other words, they call it a DMA. Um, and southeast Oklahoma is not in that DMA. So I know you guys are in Atoka and Ada. Uh, Durant and all that. You're always upset because you know, they don't cover you. That's the reason why. Tulsa will pick up that a little bit um, coming in now. And then there are some uh, a couple stations on the, the uh, Texas border uh, kind of covering that, that spot too. So if you start to see less coverage in Oklahoma City overall in general over the next few minutes, that'll be the reason why. Okay. So let me take a look at each one of these. That bromide circulation looks really good now. So there's there's a look one scan prior. Here's a look now. So it's gotten quite a bit stronger. Let's see, get some old terminology there. Location of this uh, potential developing tornado, I believe. Um, yep, there was a trader reported uh, near Bromide, so it's going to be the east of there. So this just came in Delaware Creek Stream, uh, coming up there in Academy Road. This is just south of the county line, east uh, 1790 uh, Bromide Road itself. So there'll be the intersection coming up south of Acad uh, Bromide Road and Academy Road is where that tornado is going to be. It'll continue to move kind of east-northeast, so that's going to be north of Wapanaka. Coming up on the intersection of, uh, let's see, no towns, but it'll be on the corner of Atoka County, and then eventually up toward Lehigh. So... Let's take a look at this one. So it has a potential for an EF1, a 57% probability of an EF1 tornado. So, well, you should already be in your shelters for this one, but that's the latest on that storm and where it's looking and where it's going. I don't see any um, just crazy, ridiculous uh, couplets other than that one. And it looks like a new one, a new one here. Let's take a look back. Sometimes you can get what we call radar side lobe contamination, and what looks like a couplet may not necessarily be one. Um, and so it's always good to compare prior and after radar scans, because uh, someone will jump on that and think that's what that is, and it's not, and it disappears the next scan. That's what this one did. So it looked like a couplet there for a second, 
and then that was that was the one before, and that's the one after. Um, but it's in the general area where you'd find something trying to get going. Okay, let's see. So this one's still the circulation to beat at this point in time. It's getting stronger. But it looks like I've got two, I might have two circulations on this storm. Yeah, I think it's a broad mesocyclone, kind of in this area, no, wrong color, kind of in this area here, and within that broad mesocyclone, there's two circulation features doing a dance. And it is possible to get two tornadoes at the same time, just so you know. Uh, so that would be this bright couplet in this region here to the left, and then one here to the right. This would be the smaller, tiny, funnel-like tornado, and this would be the larger tornado, should this be what um, is going on at the ground level. So there is um, Looks like a fatality in Medill, Oklahoma. At least one concern, fatality. Hmm. So bromide, uh, east southeast of bromide, there is a, which is where we're looking at here, there is confirmation of a tornado at this time. Uh, it was a rather large tornado, in other words, what they call a wedge. Now, a wedge tornado means that the cloud base is so low, it's basically a, a large cloud, a wall cloud on the ground. Um, so we kind of call that more of a wedge tornado versus something that's really high base. You can see a nice, pretty small funnel out of it. A wedge is where the whole ground is almost just sitting on top of the ground, or the whole cloud base is sitting on top of the ground. So that's what was visually seen in this area here. So here's a little icon that popped up for that wedge just south of bromide. Um, if I pull up this one, it should show that as well. Yeah. So uh, Ben Holcomb, buddy of mine. So he's a good storm spotter. So you need to be in your shelter still for this particular storm that would be heading up toward eventually uh, Lehigh, a little past north of Wapanaka. So um, as far as the town goes, we're looking at about three miles north. So coming up right along State Highway 48, uh, Kirby Lane is the intersection of this tornado at this point in time. Uh, so the prior report was a a wedge tornado, the new report five minutes later is a cone tornado. Well, five minutes later, I think it's two minutes later. Yeah, two minutes later is a cone tornado. So that's how quickly things can change in appearance and in strength and intensity and all that. As a matter of fact, the, the velocity data has really diminished. So this guy here is what's left of the marker. And if you go back a scan or two, it's nothing compared to what it was. And it kind of moved due east. So it was staying south of the Delaware Creek stream.
so that circulation is pretty much vaporized which is a good thing still probably has a nice wall cloud with it it may even occasionally have little tiny funnels but uh, as far as the triadic signature that's gone all right so the other area um, we we're focusing on near Kennefeg, south of there, north of Armstrong, there is a tornado confirmation with this guy. Uh, split, we're north, uh, State Highway 48 and 78 do a split. That's where that particular circulation's located. Let's see. Yeah, it looked best at that moment. Uh, right along 78, the last volume scan. Current scan, it's in this purple shading, which is range folding. Uh, that can sometimes happen due to uh, limitations of the Doppler range that they've radar chosen to use. So until they can change the Nyquist velocity, uh, different PRF uh, strategy, uh, we might be able to get much data in this little spot. Um, you can see how that's affecting these two storms down south which makes picking out tornadoes very difficult on radar. There's a trade-off between a short range and a long range scan. Uh, and once it kind of gets in this area of the state, that happens a lot. So it's not anything out of the ordinary, it's just a limitation of the of physics. Can't do much about it. So you kind of work with what you have, which is why you get a lot more warnings in this part of the state that don't um, verify. In other words, it's on the side of caution air on the side of caution type deal. Okay, so where are we now? So right now, that tornado warning for Armstrong continues even though it's lost in the uh, radar data down here. Uh, new update from the Weather Service. Uh, it's gonna keep it going through Fish Hatchery Road and just east of town. It's the north and south running road. Uh, east Road 2020, that'll be your intersection. So East Road 2020 and, and uh, then Hat Powell Road after that. So that's where this tornado is heading. Uh, and after that, 30, 3770, 3780, and then Caddo Hill Road after that. So over the next few minutes, that's what this trail is going to be heading toward. So make sure you stay in your shelters for that one. Uh, again, if you live out in these rural areas and you live in a mobile home, uh, you need to get out of that mobile home. That's not a good place to ride out a tornado, ever. Let's see. My friend Jeff is doing a, might be doing a stream from there. Let's see. Nope, he streamed last night. Sometimes data coverage is bad down there too. Uh, but he reported a tornado in uh, the Armstrong region. So we're, this is what we're talking about. We're talking about north of Armstrong. So uh, three miles north northwest is where the circulation center was, and that's where this start of this little red line is on the screen. Uh, so a report of some damage in the area from that. Uh, Still no debris on radar. Um, that's good. Keep in mind that it's all perspective as well. Um, so you're there, you know, spotting the storm, and you may think that's large and violent, but you're also 50 yards away from it. So everything's going to look large to you. 
whereas if you were a mile away from it, it may look very small. So it's always a perception thing. So when you see a large and violent trail doing major damage, well, um, you know, it's kind of like the beauty of the eye of the beholder. Um, if you're right there literally shaking its hand, you're going to see a lot of stuff flying up. Um, whereas if you're a quarter mile away watching it, you don't see anything flying around the air. The storm uh, near Wepanuka we talked about, uh, they mentioned the tornado roped out and lifted. So we mentioned that earlier, how it kind of lost its its look to it a while back. So no confirmed tornado at this point in time with this one. Still got that weak circulation couplet at Clear Boggy Creek Stream and uh, Delaware Creek Stream where they split. Around on the county line and uh, Blue Ribbon Road. Okay. So they've got new terminology from the warning from the Weather Service just came out. Uh, tornado warning continues for northeastern Bryan County and southeastern Oklahoma, south central Atoka County, till 630. A large and extremely dangerous tornado located near Armstrong. It's north of there, moving east at 30. Um, weather spotters confirm a tornado. So the locations include Caddo, uh, Bokito, Bennington, Kennefec, and Armstrong. Now, if you're in Armstrong, the storm is now uh, about three miles to your northeast uh, of town, so it's quickly moving away. The location area is right over East Road 2020 and 3770. Again, Caddo Hills Road coming up here in just a second. I don't see any debris signatures on here, so again, that's not going to be it means it's not going to be a violent tornado. So that's good. I know it says the wording on this is confirmed large and dangerous. Well, all tornadoes, of course, are dangerous, and depending on how close you are, it's either going to be large or very small. But the point to get across is you take it serious and you seek shelter because these things are always fluid and things can change rapidly. All right, down south, storm's got a really good hell core with it. Some rotation still weak over here around four miles east of Achille, right along the, was this Creek Island, Island Bayou stream, heading up toward Tulip and Albany so that's where a new circulation is trying to form. You guys need to be in your shelters, by the way, in Bryan County for this particular tornadic uh, potential thunderstorm. Okay, so we're looking at three, one, two, three potential uh, tornadic storms. The one north is really falling apart around Ada. It's just a glorified thunderstorm at this point. So these next three will be the ones to watch over the next, uh, really, hour. Baseball size hail in Nitta, Oklahoma, on Highway 77 and 22. Whew, that's a big hail. I had that 30 minutes ago. Okay, so big picture here for the state. Let's do that real quick. So there are some showers, maybe a rumble of thunder out here in far western Oklahoma, but no big deal with those. Same thing here for eastern, northeastern Oklahoma, around I-40, up toward Tulsa. 
brief heavy rain, some lightning, might get some small hail out of it, uh, but nothing of the magnitude that's happening down here in the southern parts of the state. The yellow shading is the tornado warning, or excuse me, tornado watch is in effect. Uh, the box colors are red are for tornado warning on this map. Orange is for the severe thunderstorm warning. So we still have a couple of tornado warnings in effect uh, for these guys. And then uh, I showed you the sounding for Dallas-Fort Worth, which showed a very strong cap in place, which is why they have not seen any thunderstorms develop down here in this area. So still can't say that one may not try, but it's running out of time and it'll be firing over here. Ah, as a matter of fact, take a look. See this box that just came up? This is a, um, a mesoscale discussion from the Storm Prediction Center, highlighting what I talked about probably just a second ago. So let's go take a look. So I know you guys, there are some people in Dallas that do watch and want to check in and see what's going on. They watched my last um, live So here's the deal, a couple of severe storms possible with severe threats of hail. Uh, it'll be a tornado watch coming up. A couple of storms may develop across North Texas after the evening. All severe other threats are on the table. Uh, observation surface analysis show a few deeper updrafts beginning to coalesce along and ahead of a bulging dry line near the DFW Metroplex. Storms have struggled to mature thus far, which suggests that some capping remains across the area. And this is also supported by the modified 19Z sounding observed earlier. Uh, I just mentioned that to you a moment ago. Upper level lift from the shortwave trough moving through the southern plains will likely continue to erode the cap, which is also known as uh, inhibition um, or negative instability. It could support the development of a few storms. The environment downstream is moist and unstable. Dew points around 70, upper level wind Profiles favor discrete supercell mode with effective shear. All severe threats are possible. Uh, favored corridor of tornado potential could develop where the low level shear increases with eastward extent closer to the warm front. Here, surface winds are more backed and shear is greater. All right, that means down the road a little bit. Okay, so there you go. So that's the region for potential development in North Texas. Now for our storms and the environment they're going into, let's get a quick update there. Still favorable for all tornadoes, um, but not favorable for significant tornadoes for the most part. There's a few categories we don't meet. Um, shear's decent, the Cape is very low in that area. So um, it's kind of on a, the right on the borderline of having a strong tornado, like it's an EF2. All right, so in other words, it's more favorable for EF0 and EF1s. But an EF2 could have, could form, but it's just right there, and it may not last that long. Um, now, if we were to go to look in Dallas, for example, or just, we'll call it Rockwall. Let's just ping Rockwall's um, environment. Let's see, for all tornadoes, let's see, that's good, that's good, that's good, that's good, that's good, that's good. In other words, favorable. As a meteorologist, you know, we speak in different languages. Um, <laughs> I could easily say, that's bad, that's bad, that's bad. Uh, let's see, for a significant tornado, they actually have way better parameters than we do for a significant tornado. How about that? So the cap is what's saving those folks down there. Um, that's a good thing. Uh, let's see. Let's do this. Yeah, we'll do this one. Yeah, they're still struggling. All right, so Dallas County is right here. All right, and they're struggling to get some storms to try to develop here just northeast of the county and then moving in to the eastern direction. So they're running out of time. We have a very small window of time to try to get some storms going. So it doesn't look likely here for, for Dallas, certainly not for Fort Worth. Rockwall is about the only county that might still get some action, but you're running out of time. And those are moving to the rest of eastern, northeastern uh, Texas. All right. Here in Oklahoma, our region continues to shrink. Uh, we're 
we're bounded by this box here to about this box here, which is behind me. So that's it for our triadic potential is now shrunk down to about a sixth of the size of the state uh, moving away. Uh, let's see here. What else I want to show you? The strength of these low level tracks, this is an hour or a 30 minute, so to have 30 minutes. Yeah, in the 30 minutes, they've lost a lot of intensity from the west side to the east side. So this is the track, and they've really weakened quite a bit. Here, they had a strength in the middle, and that one kind of weakened. Um, the ones down south. This one's still pretty consistent. There's just pockets of some high points in there of potential tornadic touchdowns. And then this one here has went from this point and is now weakened. So it's a general overall weakening trend uh, for the northern northern storms. Um, this is the southern one seems to be holding its own. That's good. All right, let's go back to radar real quick. So some thunderstorms here around the Calvin area moving east. And then we get down to the rough stuff around Atoka. Uh, whatever residual circulation is north and west of you, moving south of Lehigh by about a mile. So you guys in Lehigh, stay in your shelters until this thing moves away. Looks like an updated uh, warning information on this. The warning for Northeastern Johnson canceled. All right. So it just moved out of the county, that's all. All right, that still continues to move towards Stringtown, so be in your shelters for that. Atoka, um, you're not in the track of this particular tornado, but you know sometimes in the south end of these, which would be in this location right here, uh, you can get a new mesocyclone form, which could produce a tornado, and if that would be the case, it would move right over the town. So you're not seeking shelter for what's currently happening, which is an old circulation up here, which is dying down, but a new one that could develop. So just go ahead and stay in your shelters, play it safe, because that's still a good five minutes of time, and things can change in that order of time. All right, let's go south. Caddo County. All right, that one's really weakening. And then we got the Tulip Albany storm. Man, massive hail core in Bryan County on Highway 70. DBZ values up around 70. Whew, that's a big storm. There is a location of a wall cloud between Yuba and Utica in this particular storm. Right, let me go take a look at that. I want to see what it looks like upstairs. All right, so that's a 30,000, almost 40,000 foot hail core. And Storm itself is about 50,000 feet. And there's the pink area up around 30,000. So, yeah, that thing's probably got some tennis balls hanging upstairs, waiting to come down. Uh, as you can tell, we're so far away from the radar. This is how you can visualize the lack of radar data. All right, so let's say the radar is over here. All right. And it's got your little dish and it's sending out its little beam of energy. And that little beam of energy is looking at the storm. And if you notice, it's doing this. So it can't see anything under here. 
So as the beam moves up toward the storm, it's getting its lowest scan at about 10,000 feet. A lot happens at 10,000 feet, especially when we're talking about tornadoes. That's where most of your action is, by the way. Um, so what happens aloft is more of the hail core and just the overall mesocyclone. Uh, and then now if you have a big tornado and it's kicking up debris, then you'll see the 20 or sometimes 30,000 feet come into play where you can track that stuff getting kicked way up in the updraft. But for all purposes, when you're trying to produce, um, you know, tornado warnings or predict tornadoes, use issuing tornado warnings, you really need this layer of data. And so you can see in southern Oklahoma, you don't have it. So what you end up doing is the old CYA. It's the old, you know, better be safe than sorry. So you issue tornado warnings uh, because you don't have much data to go on. And that's why you really need storm spotters in this area. You need, you know, the fire department out there. Use eyes in the field is what you need to help supplement. Because although radars are great, there's going to be some places in the country that you just can't get what you need. And if you're going, why don't we just put a radar out there? Well, I got news for you. <laughs> that is very expensive. Um, we blow a lot of money in this country and a lot of dumb things. And it's shocking that we can't blow it on something that matters. But that's a whole topic uh, to be you know, discussed later in a roundtable discussion. But uh, that would be go a long way at helping out on the warning process. So in the meantime, you get this tornado warning for the storm down here, which may or may not be producing a tornado. That's like I said, we have to have the spotters down there. So there was a report for Caddo County. Uh, let's go back to here. Oh, Bryan County. So there was a report that there was a tornado out of this supercell storm one mile south of, so five miles southeast of Caddo. Hmm. So that's the deal where you don't have the data and you have to go off a of visual. Um, so someone that is there in the field, a storm spotter. Don't have any other information go off on that one. Let's see. And sometimes you get those reports and they're not verified, so it's tough to say for certain. This is way down here along the river. All right, let me back out. Um, so here's the Caddo County one. So this is the report. where this came in a few moments ago. So in this particular case, see the, the probability of a tornado is at 6%. And then yet you have a report of a tornado. In this case, this says it's, it's causing some damage. Uh, and this also is indicative where you're missing that lower radar data. So the algorithms are only as good as the data um, that they ingest. If there's no data to ingest, they're not gonna perform very well. So in this case, prime example, they're not performing very well in this particular storm. Um, the low-level circulation is not even being detected. So in other words, there should be something we see on radar right here, a tight couplet from this guy's report, and there's nothing there. Um, like I said, I'm at uh, 10,000 feet. So there could be a tornado there all day long, and no one would ever know uh, from a radar standpoint unless someone is there underneath it. The only exception to that rule is if it was a violent tornado, like an EF4 or 5, and it was just doing all kinds of damage, then you would see this um, different look to this data, but not on a small one. All right. Yeah, these are kind of becoming all multi-cluster garbage. They're in the cold side, I believe. Where's my...
they're on the cold side of the surface low. Matter of fact, the surface low is located I think it's here on this Caddo storm. It looks like the surface though is probably right around here. And you're getting a wind field that comes in like this. And then you're getting another wind field that comes in like this. Let's take a look at what I've got over here. That's about the spot. All right, let's see. Spotter three miles south southwest of Lehigh witnessed a rope tornado just to his west. Now, just so you know, um, a rope tornado is one of those little straggly looking finger things that kind of just curly cue and swirl. Um, that's called a rope tornado. Usually it happens in a life cycle of a tornado when it dies. It's called ropes out. Uh, but it can also happen when you have a lot of um, vorticity in that area or spin, but there's no real good mechanism to get it to produce a bona fide, you know, cloud to ground tornado you get kind of just a little region of spin and that can be like a little rope look to it and that can even be kind of what they call glorified vorticity funnels because that's what it is vorticity is just a region of spin all right so that just means these two storms down south um, are the, the only ones left to produce potential tornado this one down here in Stringtown, Atoka is done. So there's still an official warning for that. It'll either be allowed to expire or it'll be canceled, one or the other, uh, for you guys in that area. Uh, but down here in too far southern Oklahoma, southwest of Antlers, uh, southwest of Hugo, that is the two troublemakers left over. And they should probably stay troublemakers. This northern one right here it looks like it is weakened a little bit and what happens is if that storm and this storm get too close to one another they start to interact and the outflow from this then comes in to inflow of this one so the air breeze the storm breeze so all of its exhaust then gets fed into this guy here the problem with this exhaust is it's cold it's a uh, cold air so it's colder that gets fed into here. And then that kills the updraft of the storm and it's done. So this is a process that's happening currently with this uh, Bochito storm, which may mean the only storm left for the rest of this evening is going to be this one because it's got nothing to bother it. It's gonna move east, hugging the Red River the whole way. And it's probably gonna produce little tornadoes along the way. Hopefully it's producing anything bigger than that, but uh, that's what we've got. While I'm down here, let's pull up a little Dallas and see what uh, shaking. If there's anything, nope. All's good. They got a little strump here around Leonard. That'll develop and then move east toward Cooper and Paris, and that's about it. Um, so for this event, unless something else bubbles up in this region. This particular storm here is going to be the one that gets all the attention uh, over the next hour and a half as it moves east. And then it'll be out of the state. It won't be much longer. I 
let's see. Any potential tornadic circulation is literally right on the river. So here's an interesting fact. All right, so the Weather Service issues these warnings, and they'll put a centroid marker as to where the center of the tornado is and where it's going. So here's one. Here was another. And then here's another. So at one point, you had a particular circulation doing this, and it died out. Then you had a new one form, and did this, and it died out. And now we've got our third one that's done this, and now it's moving east, and it's about here. Um, it just, you know, when these things evolve and change so fast and differently, um, when it's a, uh, more disorganized, that kind of stuff happens. Got a lot of hail. It's a big hail maker. This is a big storm down here in southern Oklahoma. So this is the newest um, tornado track position. It looks like so that's where we're having our couplet form. And that's where we have a rotation track showing up in blue. You're not getting any data up around 15,000 feet, roughly. Got nothing. That's a nightmare for a meteorologist trying to do a warning. Still a big old hell core with it, though. All right. So at this point, uh, this thing's half in Oklahoma and half in Texas, and that's where it's going to stay. 
So I'm probably going to let that one go. Uh, unless something's changed in these northern ones. Probably going to let those go. Is this uh, old? Yeah, 15, 18 minutes ago. And this one was probably about the same time. Yeah, it's about the same time. 15 minutes ago. I'll take one last look at these. See if anything's changed, but I don't expect them to. Nope. And then, uh, do I have another radar look? No. It's the only one I got. All right. That's it. Well, hey, thanks for watching the coverage. It was um, a lot different than what you're used to. A lot more laid back, quieter, calmer. <laughs> I can almost put you to sleep. And if I can put you to sleep with tornadoes going on, that's a good thing. Um, then I, I could easily get you all worked up and have you jump up and down and scream and hoot and hollering. But uh, I picked the opposite. <laughs> Keep everybody sane. So anyway, that's uh, what's happened here so far over the state. So some good storms there in south central Oklahoma. So right where we kind of pegged them to uh, develop time-wise and location. Um, you can't do better than that. Uh, and there were a couple of uh, confirmed tornadoes for sure. Um, apparently it sounded like a couple of them are fairly um, sizable. Now, again, size does not equate to strength. So you could have um, you know, a half mile wide tornado. That's an E of zero in strength. Um, just like you can have a few hundred yards tornado, which has a very you know violent amount of strength to it. So there's no correlation um, on size, just visually. Um, you usually have to go either on radar data and or after the fact and measure the, the damage in the field. Um, unless, of course, on the radar data, you can do some estimates. I showed you a, a tool we can use. I just I didn't get any good data to use that tool. Um, that's a good thing. If I had the data to use, that would be a bad thing. So um, hopefully that means that most of these tornadoes are very short-lived and they were um, weaker in magnitude, so less damage. There was reported, looks like, a one death, unfortunately. I think that was in Medill. Uh, that was sad to see because there was plenty of time to seek shelter. I think at one point we did a storm track on there with 35 minutes before arrival. So in those cases, you just have to stay weather aware. Um, you're given the information. It's just how you choose to use it. That's kind of what it boils down to. All right, my friends. Well, that's it for today. Uh, our next threat of severe weather is now going to be for a while. should be fairly quiet. A knock on wood, unless something's changed. I'll look at the forecast later, but um, I think things are, you know, widespread severe weather goes good until about the end of the month or into uh, the first uh, week of May. I think things are starting to change in that regard. But uh, we're late. This kind of stuff is typically already occurring in the middle of March. So we made it all the way through close to the end of, of April before we even had a taste of this kind of stuff. And I'm totally fine with that. All right, you guys have a great evening. Thanks again for watching, liking, sharing it, letting your friends and family know uh, where they can get this information uh, at AT's Weather. All right, you guys take care. Good evening.